know, this, you talk about underappreciated superstars, you talk about underappreciated teams, this Denver Nuggets. Nobody has believed in them all season, and they're here. And listen, if the Miami Heat are able to win this championship, it will be, in my opinion, the greatest run ever. Yep. For, for an underdog. Yep. For an underdog. I'm no one has ever taken a tougher path to get to this point than the Miami Heat. You know, there's a lot of talk coming into this series about market size and the franchises that aren't here. The Nuggets are the best team in the West throughout the season. The Heat's run we'll get into a little more has been nothing short of phenomenal. And for casual fans, the casuals as the kids call them, this might be their first real exposure to Nikola Jokic, who may just be the best player on the planet. Grant, what are they going to learn about this guy? Well, Matt, you said it best. First of all, I had the chance to cover the Nuggets the first two rounds. And we were talking, you know, in the back there, just watching him play in person, uh, the feel, the passing. He doesn't beat you with uh, the explosiveness that we've seen from superstars in years past, but just a great understanding of how to play the game. Very unselfish, has taken over at times, but also can beat you with the pass. And really just a treat, kind of the modern day version of a Tim Duncan, a guy that doesn't necessarily want all the attention. Obviously, his game is a little bit different than Tim's, but the personality. Uh, and, you're, and Chuck said it best. This team, look, everyone was sort of counting them out in the postseason. Okay, they, they were number one seed in the regular season, yeah. but they're not going to get far. It's going to be Phoenix or Golden State or, or the Lakers. And, and this team has a, a chip on their shoulder and sort of the feeling that they have something to prove Absolutely. which you don't typically see from a number one seed. But Jokic is a treat to watch, and we'll get a chance to watch him here tonight for sure. Jokic comes in as just the third player in NBA history to reach the NBA Finals, averaging a triple-double through three rounds. What has impressed you about this run? I'm actually anxious to watch him play in person. Uh, I'm actually happy that a big man is now named the best player in the league. Listen, he plays with poise. He plays with confidence, and he plays the right way. Us three Hall of Famers, we can appreciate that. You know, we see a lot of guys that have a lot of talent, don't utilize their talent. This guy right here just goes out and he just outworks everybody, and it's a joy to watch. I'm always laughing, Chuck. I said, Chuck, this guy gets the easiest, slowest, 35, 17, 10 I've ever seen in my life. And he's a great player, but again, I'm anxious to watch him see him, you know, to actually watch him live. There's nobody like him, and I'm not in the Hall of Fame, but I can appreciate him as well. That's why he's gotten my MVP vote for three straight years now. Uh, as for the Nuggets, obviously a momentous occasion for this team. The last time the Nuggets reached this level in a pro league was 1976 when they played the final ABA Finals, lost in Game 6 to the then New York Knicks. David Thompson had 42 in the loss, but Julius Irving closed it out with 31 and 19. And now the Nuggets are the last of the four ABA teams that made the transition to the NBA in the merger to finally reach the NBA Finals. Folks around here have been waiting a long, long time well, for this. Well, the thing that I love about it is they did not kind of, in my opinion, cheat and do the super team thing. They built through the draft, through trade. This Joker dude was a sucker round pick. I mean, it'd be, uh, it's incredible. You know, you, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking like, first of all, it's got to be easy. Well, I forget about Steve Nash won two MVPs. Like, is there any other player who didn't got get two MVPs who didn't go like in the first round or something like that? I mean, I mean, that's crazy and amazing. Yeah. Well, he's the, he's the lowest drafted MVP already, and he's got two of them. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, nobody else got two for sure. Right. But I will tell you this, man. They got to finish the journey. They got to finish the journey. I think they got a huge advantage with the Celtics losing because now they get the home court. They, they, they came close to losing at home. Right. And so, and I actually think the game tonight is really important because the Miami Heat have been the underdog against all those teams. They always won the first game. You know, because when you're an underdog, you say all the right things. Well, we can win, blah, 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 blah. But I think if you go back and look at Milwaukee and look at the Celtics, who people assume are going to beat the Heat, uh -huh. once you win that first game, everything's on the table. So I'm not saying the game is a must win. I think it's a really important game for the Celtics, in my opinion. And not only that, Matt, from experience, like when you 
see nine days of rest on a piece of paper looks beautiful. Yeah. But, you know, how much practice can you do? How much, like, nothing can simulate what's about to happen here in a few hours. So, uh, hopefully the Denver Nuggets don't come out rusty or a little tired. You know, I watch a press card where they say they practice every day, but, you know, when you're in the finals, you practice, but I don't want to twist my ankle, so you don't no. go a hey, thousand. That's days. always a question: the rest thing. And we well, looked it up. The rest thing is not is just bogus. Because if they win, if they play well, they're gonna say the rest was good. If they play bad, they're gonna say they were rusty. I will tell you this, you know, Shaq. I want to say this about first-hand experience. My biggest regret in my career. I assume because normally when I played on, at home, I said, "Let me get these other guys going." And then I'll do my thing later. I'll never forgive myself when we played the Bulls for the championship. My team never recovered game one. They, uh, you got to be really aggressive. You got to be really aggressive. Because to be honest with you, the lights were too bright for us in game one. Because it's different. And Jack, you know, you did it more than all of us. Ain't nothing like the NBA Finals. So you got more press conference. You got more family and friends. So my advice to the Denver Nuggets, especially Joker and Jamal, yo man, do not wait. Because I tell people, that's one of my biggest regrets. I was trying to get other guys started. And before we could get started, they had pulled away. Well, you both make a great point. And Shaq, you brought up that concern with Denver. Obviously, nine games. Look, during the game ones of all the games here in the postseason, Denver has been dominant. They have come out at home, set the tone. Uh, they've scored 65 points in the first half uh, on 49% field goal shooting. So they, they've tried to come out and knock teams out. Lakers in, in, the East, in the Western Conference Final had a great second half in that game right. one. But the nine games, are, it'll be interesting to see how they play because you said they've been so dominant throughout the regular season and the postseason at home. And in Miami, they've been playing. They're in a rhythm. Yeah. They're in a groove right now. They've gone through a tough series. So they could come out here yeah, and steal this why, game one. That's which, why I said the nice is really important game. The rest thing is, is maybe a little overblown to your point. Oh. Teams with seven days of rest before game one of the NBA Finals or more are still 13 and 8, about what you would expect from any game ones. Uh, with that in mind, which is a bigger factor tonight, the relatively quick turnaround for Miami and travel here or, or the off time in the early minutes? You know, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck makes a great point. If you play great, the rest is good. If you don't play great, it's a factor. I've had both in my experience. We've had, you know, you know, especially for a guy like me having those four, five, six days off, and then you come in, everybody's just rusty. I, mean, I, just, I don't, don't know what it is. I can't explain it. So to answer your question, I think, Denver needs to come out and make a statement. You know, everybody's already picking them to win. And, you know, they have a, a really big advantage in the middle. They need to take advantage of that. So, you know, uh, Joker and Jamal and the guys, home court advantage. You got to take away the home court advantage. You got to put these guys away. Because a team like Miami, Miami Heat, if you give them room, if you give them room, they will always find a way to win. Absolutely. Both teams have won all their game ones so far in this run to the NBA Finals. Clearly.